Oh, yeah. That didn't feel right. Let me do it again. Oh, yeah. Better. What up, y'all? It's your boy, the one and only A Switch, aka the two for three. Not three for three. Um, missing out on that GTX 380 weighted bars, <laughs> aka the 160 times social distancing champion, aka put some butter on the elbow, get you a. Uh, Get you a chicken, chicken wing. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry in advance for that. Bringing you yet another episode of Switch of Sights. Episode 74. Getting up there, man. Uh, today's date is September 24th, 2020. Um, I feel like there is something notable about this. I don't know. No, that was it. September 24th, 2020. Um, but for those that don't know, welcome to uh, Switches Sites, the gaming podcast where I talk about just that. Um, well, another <laughs> another week, <laughs> uh, another form of hell, more or less. So, uh, same, same, uh, same different day, you know? So, um, what's new? Nothing. Just, just us trying to stay alive with all this COVID is going around still, um, to get real serious for a second. Uh, of course, um, feel like I shouldn't be surprised, but, uh, Brianna Taylor, you know, one of the unfortunate people, um, suffer from, the just I can't even describe it just the fucked upness of uh police brutality was wrongfully shot <laughs> invaded invaded their home they were sleeping shot them multiple times for no reason was, uh, you know, police, police officers that were involved got, got away scot-free, no repercussions at all, got away with cold-blooded murder, which, you know, it's pretty sad, man, as a black person in America, it's freaking depressing, knowing, uh, I make the wrong move that somebody else could make, you know, of a different color. I could be just dead, just like them. I could be sleep, (laughs) could be sleep, just minding my own business, get barged in on and killed. Just is crazy. That just, just shows the precedent that's being set that like, you know, even on top of that, just letting other, other police officers know like, Hey, Man, so I guess we got free reign, right? Just because uh, we can hide uh, behind the badge, we can do whatever we want. Messed up, man. Really is. Really is. Um, Just condolences to Breonna Taylor and her family, you know, getting a measly 12 billion to as hush money rather than not getting the actual justice that She deserved for getting wrongfully killed. So not to stay in a depressive state, but that's at least something I want to at least touch on, bring some, some attention to awareness for, I (laughs) mean, I don't know if you're under a rock and have not heard about that, but either way, trying to do my part in some way. So justice for Breonna Taylor. Um, so outside of that, 
um, the uh, ongoing battle, <laughs> get the uh, highly cherished items. As I mean, admittedly been pretty good. I can't even necessarily lie. PS5 secured, Xbox Series X secured. Tried to go for the 390 today. It did not work out. Mission failed so far. Um, this car was in even lower supply than I think the 380s last week. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I shouldn't really be surprised, but yeah, no. Hey, uh, valiantly tried, put an effort into it. But you know what? I'm uh, working on some methods, some techniques. To not lose again next time, whenever they restock either or card. So it's okay. It's not the end of the world, you know. Put put some effort into it. Try again next time. Get back up, buddy. You know. I don't. I don't know what that means, but you. Yeah, maybe you. I don't know. Without further ado. The COVIDness is sneaking up on me. <laughs> um, let's stop the dilly dallying and get right into it. Biggest, biggest news topic of the week. It's actually been pretty eventful week. Uh, Microsoft got money. Microsoft got money. Microsoft just straight up bought Bethesda and ZeniMax. I guess ZeniMax is over Bethesda or Bethesda is under ZeniMax, however way you want to, you want to interpret it. Uh, Microsoft just straight up just threw like 7.5 billion in front of Bethesda slash ZeniMax. Just, they just walked up Phil Harrison with a uh, Satya Nadella right behind him. He's like, Hey, this company, I want that. Whatever you need, uh, 7.5 billion. <laughs> Everybody's laughing. <laughs> some, some, uh, some, uh, bodyguard in a suit <laughs> got like a freaking, freaking, uh, container of it. Here you go. 7.5 billion. Uh, I think that's right. All right. Uh, <laughs> dude's like, how'd you, how'd you, how did you make that? How, where did, how did you calculate before I even don't worry about it? Uh, so, uh, we want elder scrolls, uh, fallout, all that exclusive. Let's, let's get to work. <laughs> like, okay. Uh, I'm definitely joking, but they're still in the talking phases, but it seems like it's pretty much a done deal. Um, that Microsoft is buying ZeniMax Bethesda pretty huge, man. Uh, at least for me personally, it's a lot of, uh, IPs they own that definitely speak to me. Fallout, Elder Scrolls, um, the evil within. Um, and then there's a lot of sub companies under Bethesda as well. I think arcane and tango, uh, works, which is, uh, the uh, new studio from the the myth, the man, the legend Shinji Mikami, in terms of making like um, the Evil Within games. So, uh, and, I th and Tokyo Ghostwire Tokyo that's coming out. <laughs> I guess that's the funny thing too is that uh, some of these titles um, that are now owned by Microsoft were actually timed exclusive for uh, PS5. So that's. Um, death loop and death loop and, um, what's the death loop in Tokyo Ghost ghostwire Tokyo. So I believe they said that Microsoft is honoring those exclusivity deals in some way, shape or form. I guess the time exclusivity of it, I believe, I think that that was the original intent beforehand that those titles will be exclusive to PS five for a year and then come to Xbox. But, um, apparently 
it's going to be honored. But when you think about it, I mean, Microsoft still wins, uh, technically by still getting some, some money, some kickback from that, this exclusivity, uh, which is, <laughs> it's kind of crazy to fathom, but I mean, at the same time, Microsoft has, has a uh, Minecraft, which they, which they own and they have, uh, you know, um, let be on other platforms, including the PS PS4 and stuff. So, um, huge news, man. Still just, that's crazy. So many iconic IPs, doom, Wolfenstein dishonored. It's, it's a lot, a lot of, a lot of exclusivity. They got to definitely compete with, uh, PlayStation. So man, just all these acquisitions they've been making, man, it's going to pay off at some point. <laughs> it's got to, especially that combined with game pass. Uh, Microsoft's about to be a threat. Let's, uh, let's also not forget to mention how, uh, how, uh, convenient that, uh, they announced this the day before pre-order started last, no, this week time is just melding together. Uh, yeah, this week. So I was like, oh, it's it interesting that, uh, yeah, the day before pre-order start, you announced this, uh, you know, uh, I guess partially maybe they didn't want it to get leaked out or wanted to beat the leakers to it. And then I guess obviously with the increased appeal to the next gen, uh, consoles, um, obviously the series X win, win. Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, man, I mean, it's, and there's some, uh, game pass games. So obviously a lot of these titles will eventually come to game pass. I think, uh, doom eternal is, uh, at least rumored to be coming to game pass soon. So it's kind of a win for me personally. Well, no. Yeah. Cause personally I was waiting out on doom eternal. Uh, especially <laughs> to play it with a graphics card, new graphics card, but <laughs> that plan fell through. But, um, now with game pass, especially considering a lot of these games are PC, I could just, I would be able to play doom eternal for free on game pass on PC, which, uh, that, that was the least mental hurt. I was like, oh no. I don't really feel like playing doom on console. I would rather play it on PC, but Xbox, you know what? Hey, Xbox like, Hey, we got you, bro. All right. We got you. Doom eternal PC. You already know. So I guess that also poses the question though, with Bethesda's existing, um, store Bethesda store, I think. I think it's just called Bethesda store or something like that. Uh, I think I have it. Let me look it up real quick. Bethesda, Bethesda.net launcher. I'm curious how that's going to work. I, I would assume maybe they just let Bethesda branch how they want to branch and then get the flexibility to, you know, um, probably be on both ends. Kind of like steam, how a lot of Microsoft titles, they're also putting on steam for people to purchase as well, like halo and stuff. So I could see that. I could see that. Uh, then <laughs> it's also now like some very interesting dynamics now with this acquisition, probably the biggest one that's caught, caught on a, 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 a lot is, uh, Bethesda and obsidian now being <laughs> back together technically, uh, since, um, uh, Microsoft bought obsidian. Uh, previously before this acquisition. And, uh, for those that may not know obsidian, uh, used to, well, no, yeah, used to, I think they made, used to make the original fallouts, uh, before three, one and two. And they also developed fallout new Vegas, which is pretty good. I thoroughly enjoyed that. So <laughs> people are, uh, I think, uh, somebody on Twitter, uh, reached out to, uh, obsidian saying like, well, guys, since, uh, since, uh, you guys are back together now, um, uh, new Vegas too. 
that uh city was like i don't know uh shrug shrug emoji uh, not even emoji yeah i guess you could say emoji it's the old school um i don't even know what you call it like strike character type um special character i guess special character maybe is the closest i can get but you get the idea so uh then also the interesting dynamic is that um john john carmack yeah i think john carmack who um was obviously very closely associated with doom uh and now is kind of was i guess kind of distant from from uh the company i guess he's under its software which is under zenimax i think uh where i guess it the impression is that he's been pretty distant but i guess he still uh, benefits from the company since he's one of the heads, maybe a little unclear about that, but generally it's like, I guess he feels like he's <laughs> more inclined to come back with the company more so than he was now, uh, due to this acquisition. And I guess it's going to be kind of interesting to see how some of the bigger heads of the company, like Pete Hines, uh, Todd Howard, uh, how they're gonna still within the company but it seems like microsoft at least according to um phil uncle phil <laughs> aka uncle phil um he will or he claims that the company is still going to be the company with their own you know their flexibility that they always had but just you know obviously under the microsoft umbrella now so I definitely approve. It's really, really interesting um, to uh, at least bring the level of the playing field more or less. Um, kind of increase some of that competitive spirit that uh, at least, honestly, Microsoft has been severely lacking in. So, love to see it. Love to see it. Um, and then uh, I think another factor is that uh, in terms of exclusivity, Microsoft was uh, very vague in terms of their them saying that. What did they say? They said uh, exclusivity is on a case by case basis. So I mean, take that for what you will, but for me, it seems like that's just basically going to essentially be, uh, you know, maybe the really really super huge games will siphon to. Uh, to the other, other uh, consoles like PS5, uh, but maybe it's gonna be some maybe shorter exclusivity, or I feel like just some interesting caveat to it. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe they'll actually honor it. Maybe they're just fine still getting getting the revenue essentially for having their games on a PS5. So who knows? Um, I don't know, man. Just you have like one of the most successful titles of all time, the Elder Scrolls series, and to not have it as exclusive to your console, to encourage people to jump to your, um, console, um, is interesting. Consider we don't know that yet, but I mean, it, it, I just find it hard to believe you paid 7.5 billion to buy a company just to, um, give those games to your competitor. I don't think that's going to happen. Maybe the lesser games they'll give to PS5 and then the few bigger games, there's going to be some exclusivity of some sort, probably likely just timed, maybe permanent console exclusivity. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. We shall see overall, man, super huge. Huge ass news it really is. So, um, I guess touch it back on Xbox because man, Xbox really did have a week this week. Uh, of course the pre-order fiasco that is the Xbox series X pretty much just like the PS five Xbox series X was, I mean, depending on how you look at it, just as horrible, if not more horrible, because I feel like 
there's the dynamic that uh, bots and scalpers were able to prepare in advance. Um, uh, considering we had a definitive date and time, but at least kind of with the PS five, you kind of somewhat had the element of surprise if you were, you know, paying attention to your Twitter and other sites, but, um, which I felt gave an advantage to people that wanted to get the console that were real people and not scalpers, just artificially inflating the price just to make a profit. Um, so, you know, yeah. So at least I'll tell you like my experience, uh, at least hunting for the series X. So what did I do? I, uh, you know, had all my sites lined up had all my order information ready to go. And, uh, I think my first, My first site, I think was Amazon. Well, I was really just refreshing all of the, uh, all of the pages just to see which one would, uh, open up first. So actually I think I went for uh target and Walmart first because at least I had success before with PS five and, oh, uh, um, Amazon normally waits a while after and some of the other sites as well, like Best Buy are also delay seem seemingly delay their, um, their, uh, pre-orders. Uh, so I tried those two first, uh, Walmart just instantly went out of stock. It's, it seemed like, or I think it was a thing where you would, which it seems like the common factor for all the sites was that you would hit pre-order. It would go to your cart, but then in some cases it wouldn't actually go to your cart or you get an error that it wouldn't go to your cart or the site would barely load or slowly load understandably due to well, one, the huge influx of people that apparently want a series X, which actually I'm surprised by I thought a lot of, uh, PC players and you know, that already get the exclusives on PC wouldn't want to, but, uh, apparently maybe it was just a lot of butthurt people from not getting a PS five want to get the series X or whatever, but for the, yeah, for the site, it was either one of those, uh, those things that was happening. Uh, target was weird where you could pre-order it. You'd hit pre-order. It would say it's in your cart. At some point you'd go to the cart. It's not in your cart. Okay. Let me go back pre-order. Then it will give you air that, uh, one or more items are in a cart, but it shows zero items are in a cart. So target, what are you smoking? What are you on? So there was that. So target was a dud. Walmart was a dud. I think next I tried Microsoft, which is kind of ironic because their site just straight up crashed instantly. It's, it felt like, uh, from there. So yeah, that was just, uh, pretty bad. Yeah. So pretty much gave up on Best Buy. I mean, not Best Buy, but uh, Microsoft. Next, I tried GameStop because they started opening up. GameStop was pretty interesting and promising because they had uh, a queue or line system. But at least if it actually worked in theory, it would be pretty great. But uh, it seems like it didn't really work effectively. So it would just leave you hanging essentially at the line but then potentially other people were just able to access the site. So that was interesting and basically was a pain because pretty much after you got out, out of that somehow, I think after some refreshes, you're able to access the site and then I went for it, but then it was just the same deal where you try to get to the add to cart it would take forever to load. You get it to the cart. It would say, we're sorry, this item is out of stock. What, what do you mean? So it was pretty much that, but luckily after I brute forced, <laughs> literally brute forced, uh, clicking repeatedly, like my life depended on it, secured a series X pre-order, um, as well as, uh, Amazon as a backup. So for Amazon, it was, yeah, Amazon was really quick. <laughs> it went up for like, maybe not even like three minutes, I think 
went up for like three minutes. I was able to get the pre-order in and then they totally cut the link. I think after that, which is crazy, just, just, just wild. But out of all of them, Amazon is definitely the best in terms of just being, keeping up time. And, you know, I'm pretty certain what their like established infrastructure with, you know, their existent, uh, online focus of order and stuff. It, uh, it was definitely the best out of in terms of experience, but you know, it's pretty risky to try to wait on that. So yeah. So long story short, success ready for next gen, baby. I survived the war. I can live to tell this tale when I'm like 65 to maybe my future grandkids. So one story I won't tell is the failure of the GTX, uh, 3090, 3080, but we'll see who knows. Maybe, maybe, uh, there might be a success story by next episode, considering how Nvidia manages their stock. But again, I'm, I'm, uh, utilizing some resources to even the field, take the edge off. If you know what I mean? Ethically, of course, you know, so, um, yeah. So, uh, also <laughs> I guess I went in that for, uh, well, within good reason, but, uh, also some of the <laughs> factors of that is, uh, somewhat of a false article essentially, but, um, Apparently, according to Andrew alerts on Twitter, uh, Xbox one X sales rank went up 70, 747% on Amazon. So it's pretty safe to assume a lot of people bought an Xbox one X, uh, under the impression that it was Xbox series X. So probably, you know, some, uh, older parent to, to young Jimmy just ordered it. And, uh, you know, mistakenly, uh, bought a Xbox one X instead of a series X. So poor Timmy come Christmas morning, going to be real disappointed at his parents. <laughs> be a, be a real sad, uh, be a real sad, uh, Christmas for a lot of, uh, a lot of youngins. So again, goes out pour one out to, to the poor kids that, uh, have an Xbox one X instead of an Xbox series X. That's such a bad idea in terms of the name in convention. I guess it kind of helps. They discontinue the Xbox one X, I guess, presumably for this reason, but still it's just keeping that in the universe is still confusing, you know, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, pretty interesting, but yeah, the, the 740% is pretty false due to like the sales going up from nothing, which basically skewed that, that, that percentile where it's, um, uh, generally just kind of unrealistic, but I mean, good on Xbox either way, I guess <laughs> it's getting rid of that back stock <laughs> that may possibly be returned, but I digress. Um, then on top of that, <laughs> on top of paying 7.5 billion to buy Bethesda, <laughs> Satya Nadella was like, Hey, we going to buy more. If you, if you keep, if you keep talking, we going to buy more. If you keep talking that sh all right, I think we plan Microsoft bitch, Xbox, <laughs> they got the X up Xbox. After they make a deal, Xbox, Xbox, you already know. <laughs> so just, yeah, a quick quote from him, uh, in terms of the acquisition of ZeniMax Bethesda, all, all about the future of software. And because video games is seen by Natalia as, a, as the future of software, he stated that Microsoft will consider buying even more video game companies. <laughs> <laughs> it's just crazy. It's like, Hey, I mean, I got money. So, I mean, what you trying to do? 
This is exact, pretty much what I interpreted from that. So that was by CNET.com. Just interesting, <laughs> Interest, interesting all around. Good to see uh, Xbox back in, back in good, good graces, if anything, I guess. Or, you know, obviously Xbox has always been, is it safe to say Sega of this generation? Kind of always behind Nintendo. I feel like essentially Nintendo generally won the, uh, you know, generation generations from way back, but I don't know. I feel like maybe it felt like it was 50 50, but I think it's just my, me, my interpretation from when I was in that, in that, uh, that time where, uh, <laughs> it feels real old man in that time where I did have those consoles. So who knows? Moving on. Um, apparently rumor has it that, uh, Nintendo is looking for a senior engineer with HDR support. Uh, this was leaked by LinkedIn, which is, that's kind of messed up. I feel like it's I feel like there's some ethical issue with that where it's like, you know, obviously you need to reach out to people to, uh, you know, get jobs, but <laughs> at some point it's a cost where your information is going to be leaked. I think maybe the company could be better about concealing the duties, but at, at the same time, you need to know what you're getting into as well. So it's a, it's a two way street, but either way, uh, looking for an, uh, engineer that have experience with different display technology, LCD, OLED, HDR, and yada, 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 all the other stuff that a senior engineer for display technologies would do. Uh, so pretty much this also further solidifies the rumors of a switch pro or what a lot of people are saying, this potentially could be a switch to like even further down the road where this next rumored switch could be dropping sometime early next year as like a mid, uh, tier upgrade or whatever. And then the actual full full bone switch successor would be like maybe 2023 or something like that, which would make sense. Would you, it'd be pretty, pretty cool. Um, then I think in, in addition to that, the infamous, uh, credible leaker that is, uh, why is his name drawing a blank to me? Why is his name blanking? something horror or let me look it up. Let me look it up. It's something. Um, man, it's, it's familiar. It's familiar. Well, let me look it up real quick. I want to give a gotta give gotta give some credit. Um Dusk something. Dusk something. It's gonna drive me crazy. Which oh Dust Golem. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Dust Golem solidified, added more credence to the rumors as well. On top of these two additions is that, um, he said from what he heard, the, the, the rumors, switch pro rumors are true. And, um, that that's the reason why a lot of switch games recently have been keeping their frame rate unlocked uh, to have an easy performance boost on it. So yeah, I don't know with, uh, the new monster hunter rise announcement, which is w weirdly close to the anniversary of the original switch being released. It being like basically three, four years since the original switch, uh, released as well. All signs are pointing to a switch pro. So, I mean, 
Monster Hunter Rise again be a perfect Switch Pro game considering the graphical fidelity because that looks like that couldn't run on a Switch, but apparently it probably has to if uh, this is a Switch Pro as a mid mid uh mid uh mid upgrade than rather than a um cut off upgrade like uh the new Nintendo Switch uh th- no the new 3DS which was restricted to the new 3DS was restricted to um a couple games where you can only play it on the new Nintendo Switch I mean, why do I keep saying Nintendo Switch? The new 3DS, where only some games you can only play, and weirdly enough, like some Super Nintendo games, uh, you couldn't play as well. You can only play Super Nintendo games on the uh, new Nintendo Switch. So, who knows? They might, they might, they could go either way, but I don't know. I feel like to keep everything in the same family, I feel like they would keep the compatibility open across the previous gen or the old switch and the new switch. Um, then also obviously legend of Zelda two, we don't know a release date would be a perfect game to release with your new switch console holding all the new bells and whistles with that, that would come with the switch pro and just like a 1080p resolution, 4k and um docked with a uh, bluetooth functionality which has been like the biggest downside of the switch yeah yeah oh man freaking no more heroes which that was pushed back so maybe that might line up and uh be supported by the switch pro even <laughs> freaking deadly premonition 2 might actually be more playable <laughs> might actually be might actually be playable now crazy so much potential and your your previous collection all be upgraded and have new new additions Ugh, I, I definitely want it i don't know about you but i definitely would get it either way move it on uh man these these jesus the, the good times keep rolling man so out of nowhere today actually uh, Amazon announced Luna, basically their new game and streaming services, uh, hosted by, uh, Amazon web services cloud. So, uh, it's still somewhat kind of vague in terms of their information, but they did said there's, a six dollars $6 a month for early access, a $50 controller and a couple of a lot of older titles it really does i don't think there's one exclusive new title or anything like that so far but uh they're planning that 4k 60 currently is 1080 60 will be integrated with twitch on day one that's pretty substantial i think um it'll be on fire tv pc mac and ios with an android version coming a few weeks after launch i think for ios you know, do that weird, I guess, I don't even know what you call it. Weird, uh, restrictions with Apple. I think you can only do it through the browser on iOS, which is weird, but who knows if that's, I feel like that would provide a performance hit of some sort, but we'll see. I don't know, but there's that. Some of the games, uh, that will be included. Resident Evil 7, Control, Tacoma, Res, Inf- Res Infinite, Metro Exodus, The Sexy Brutal, Overcooked 2, and others. So, not all titles listed, blah, blah, blah. I know Ubisoft, they said they're supporting their titles as well. Um, so, man, I mean, literally all Luna has to do, <coughs> Amazon, Luna, whatever. All they need to do is just provide a subscription service similar to uh, Xbox Game Pass, where pretty much for one flat rate a month you can play any of these games. Um, and you know, 
kind of the Netflix style. Some new, some new stuff leaves, some new stuff comes in, things like that. Take a sip. But from what it seems like is it's, it seems to be a la carte kind of like, um, table where you have to buy particular tiers. I would assume maybe the tiers are associated with genre, which is kind of weird to think about like having games as like a cable provider tier or, you know, if you want to want the, uh, <laughs> want to try hard bundle, <laughs> you got call of duty, you got apex, you got Fortnite, and yeah, <laughs> I gotta actually see that considering how they're associated with Twitch as well. It's called the Twitch, the, the, the Twitch essentials, the uh, Twitch try hard bundle or whatever. Um, one point I heard that I think is really actually very solid is that, uh, the iconography of their like icon, which is the Luna I feel like they, yeah, they probably would have done good if they just straight up embraced Twitch's iconography, considering the mind share that everybody already has with Twitch and somewhat capitalizing off that, or maybe even put the Twitch logo inside this Luna logo, which is like a triangle with, uh, it looks like a scientific, um, what is it? Gene spl splicing, uh, icon that looks like a triangle, but like just put Twitch in there. I don't know. Maybe they just didn't want to fully confuse it associated with Twitch. Maybe just make it their own. Either way, definitely has some potential and definitely uh, Stadia needs to be freaking terrified at this point. Uh, cause literally all they need to do to just straight dominate is just literally, um, just have a, a standard subscription service, have access to all the games you can stream and play and try out. And it'd be a done deal. Apparently I don't get why people, why they don't want to do that. Uh, I mean, considering it seems like even Amazon is shying away from it, I guess maybe overload <clears throat> due to the accessibility of it, like stressing the servers because of so many people and consider it so accessible. That's the only thing I could think of, but either way, it seems to be better than, than stadia regardless, which is should at least now finally get stadia to actually go with some standard subscription model and not a, you know, buy a single game and just play that and stream it, which is for streaming service. I don't think is really logical, but I digress. And, uh, in the sad train to, to, uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales, the game that we were hyped up. Uh, has a little, has a couple caveats to it, unfortunately. So the first one is that, um, man, it's like, I don't even know how to say this to bring, bring this to the point news y'all is that, um, there is no free upgrade to Spider-Man remastered. So basically if you owned Spider-Man for PS4, you have to upgrade to the PS five version, basically buy buy the Spider-Man miles Morales bundle. I think if you just bought just miles, miles Morales itself, you can also on top of what you already pay, you could just pay a little bit more to, uh, get Spider-Man remastered. So it essentially will be discounted if you already bought miles Morales. I think that may, I would assume only pertains to digital. But I guess since they're separate anyway, you could just buy it, but maybe it might cost more because you didn't buy them together either way. Yeah. Unfortunately there is that. Then even on top of that, which is probably the more hurtful of the two is that, uh, saves game saves from Spider-Man on PS4 will not. Yeah. I did the Mori there. You are not, <laughs> you are not where he says it with like some depression. You are not the father <laughs> will not. You cannot transfer your saves from PS4 to PS5. That one just hurt a lot because at least my, my initial intention, at least after 
hearing that this is going to be remastered Spider-Man was that, okay, I just, you know, on release the PS5 play, uh, play and beat Miles Morales. And then let me see, see how different, at least from what I remember, uh, Spider-Man is, uh, on, on PS5, all the little nicks and nannies and improvements they, uh, made, uh, compared to the original. Uh, but, uh, this kind of makes it a little bit more difficult. I guess essentially could, still could do it. I'll probably maybe just play through the whole, uh, starting, uh, start of the game and then probably just drop it after that, after knowing, you know, literally did everything, got all the achievements and <laughs> trophies. Uh, but I mean, one thing to be aware of, obviously is that you can still play the game, uh, the PS4 version on your PS5. So there's no issue there necessarily. Obviously you just won't get the, the bells and whistles that you would get with the remaster version. So pretty, pretty disappointing specifically the, uh, the save, <coughs> the save, um, lack of save support. Um, hopefully if maybe we complain enough, maybe they might put it in or I don't know. We'll see. Um, really hurts. I heard it a lot, you know, may I, maybe I just wanted to jump do like a truncated run through the game just to get a gist of what it's really, how better and faster the game is overall. But, uh, seems like that might not be it. Might, might, might not necessarily be the case. So, but I think if you get, it's, it's a very complicated, <laughs> set up with this game now. So basically I'm trying not to confuse y'all, but basically let's say, and I think that was other thing too. I don't think is not necessarily widely known as well as that. If you well, one Spider-Man Miles Morales is on going to be on PS4 as well, which, you know, <laughs> they held that information. Like, of course, after pre-orders came out for PS5, uh, at least, uh, prematurely. Um, so you, you can upgrade for free, uh, miles Morales to PS five, but you can't upgrade Spider-Man from PS four to PS five. But I mean, I kind of somewhat get it because maybe they were on development with the PS five in mind and maybe they cut some things back versus Spider-Man, which did come out like two, three years ago, it feels like that, you know, they didn't necessarily maybe have the PS five in mind when developing it or something. I don't know, but obviously they kind of did maybe to some extent since they were able to remaster it. So who freaking knows anymore? Depressing either way, depressing either way. Um, moving on. Uh, man. And like, I hope to God, this is true rumor, rumor mill that are at least somewhat, uh, viable is that, uh, apparently, uh, re-releases and ports of metal gear, solid one and two might be coming to PC, which is great, which is great. But even on top of that, uh, I guess it's still unknown if it's, if, if it's just the PS one version, but just port it like just straight up. All oh, right. We got the PS one version. We'll just port it to PC. That's yet to be confirmed to my understanding. And obviously it's still a rumor, but, um, I don't know, man. Let me look up, uh, There was some article on it that of course I don't, don't have, let's see, we'll search by title. Yeah. So essentially, um, on top of that rumor, there's another rumor that surfaced like maybe a couple days after is that apparently metal gear one, two, three, and four would be, uh, ported and remastered PC as well as PS five. 
which uh, that that'd be crazy. Uh, but you know, there is that big kind of question in the air. Uh, you know, specifically since you know Kojima is no longer with uh, Konami, like how that actually will work. Because I think that will definitely dictate how a lot of fans would actually receive this remake. So, like you know, let's say, hey, we we give you Metal Gear Solid one through four, but uh, Konami's making it. All right, Metal Gear Survive, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Some asshole. Metal Gear Survive, right? <laughs> it's like, uh, you bitch. <laughs> Metal Gear Survive. So, oh uh, yeah, that would suck. Yeah, so I've seen some theories about, you know, maybe Sony might be trying to get the rights or get some type of deal where, you know, maybe Konami partially gets some money for it. But, you know, they, uh, PlayStation, like, does all the bells and whistles and maybe, maybe gets Kojima involved in that extent and also get blue point involved, which are, they've just been like, this track record has been co- uh, consistent with, uh, the awesome remakes remasters they've been doing so far. I think they did shadow of the Colossus, uh, the metal gear, uh, solid collection. I think from, that was one, two, and three on PS3 and 360. And now, uh, well, uh, if, if the rumors, um, come true that they would then work on this remastered cause man, I would love to play metal gear solid four in freaking 4k 120 FPS probably wouldn't happen. I don't know. Depend on the optimization of them porting it from the PS3, but it could, it, it could happen, you know? So I think that would be the ideal situation. Cause you'd be sh- sh- like more so directly supporting metal gear and Kojima in a sense, rather than just directly, um, supporting Konami, uh, in their company. Um, even though technically to a lesser extent you are, but you know, it's more so it feels, doesn't feel as nasty <laughs> with Konami doing this without, you know, any involvement with Kojima, which I hope that'd be one thing too, that maybe Kojima gets involved to some extent, maybe, I don't know, does commentary, <laughs> does commentary of the whole, all of the games as you play them or something, which honestly would be pretty damn dope. If, if I'm being honest, it seems, it, that seems like a very, Kojima thing to do, especially since he always kind of, um, poses himself or at least going by his direction, our direction and just direction overall as like kind of a film director in a lot of his stuff. So actually would be very in line with him and, you know, considering how he's under, um, Sony to some extent, I think maybe that was just Death Stranding. I forgot. But either way, I think it will still make him look, uh, it would be really awesome if they managed to swing that somehow, but that would be my definite ideal hopes and aspirations. If this actually comes to be true is that, you know, they actually, uh, involve him still in some way by whether it be just some, just general consultant here and there with some input that maybe he provides, maybe gets his insight on what he maybe would have wanted to do differently if he had another shot. And maybe they somehow, he somehow gets involved, um, with, you know, being able to do some, some extra content. Maybe he never got to do before in some of the games or whatever. Totally, totally would love, love, love me. Metal gear solid one through four collection. Come on, please, please be true. Please. I'm begging you enough gushing over uh, Metal Gear Solid. Uh, Moving on. Uh, Man, the game that took the world by storm. I feel like that's the theme, (laughs) the theme uh, so far this year. It was what I think really the first game this year. I think it felt like Animal Crossing in terms of just the immense fervor of everybody on the on Twitter and other social media and just the media overall uh, just ran and raving about Animal Crossing and 
cocktails and all this stuff. Um, then it was fall guys, uh, for a good while, mainly the whole summer. Now it's among us, which is basically the thing in the game. It feels like considering again, I have never <laughs> ironically not watched the movie, but I've seen a lot of pop culture references to it. So that being said, uh, considering the immense success of, of among us, uh, the developers of among us, um, inner sloth, uh, they said they're actually, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. I mean, if you look up, if you think about it at the surface that they're canceling among us too, basically, uh, because the game was too good. They thought, Hey, we can't get higher than here and we're quitting. So that's pretty much the story. I thought it was, no. <laughs> uh, that'd be kind of funny though. Kind of like, um, flappy bird <laughs> when it became too big, the uh, developer of the game just, just couldn't take the pressure or all the, I guess, fame that came with it. But no, at least in this case, they're actually doing chain turning among us into a seasonal model. It seems so basically all the stuff they were thinking intended of doing in among us too. They're actually just going to implement into among us uh, itself. And I, I, from what I get is that it's going to be a seasonal model. So yeah. Yeah, and I'll read the statement verbatim uh, from Intersloff, a statement by them. Uh, us devs have had several long discussions about what we want to do with the game. When we do stop working on Among Us 1, when, yeah, when when do we stop working on Among Us 1? <laughs> what content goes into Among Us 2? The main reason we were shooting for a sequel is because the code base of Among Us 1 is so outdated and not built to support adding so much new content. However, seeing how many people are enjoying Among Us One really makes us want to be able to support the game and take it to the next level. We have decided to cancel Among Us Two and instead put all of our focus into improving Among Us One. All of the content we had planned for Among Us Two will instead go into Among Us One. This is probably the more difficult choice because it means going deep into the core code of the game and reworking several parts of it. We have lots of things planned and we're excited to bring new content to everyone as you continue to enjoy playing. So, um, totally understandable. I mean, I feel like it's hard to, it's hard to try and initiate a whole new player base after you have one already established already and it's so, you know, fruitful more or less, I'm pretty sure the game is like huge by now. So yeah, just like after this game, just cause I believe the story about the game, I think I talked about it before is that the game actually released two years ago, but just caught on uh, recently within the past few months. So it, it would be pretty weird that, you know, this game caught on the uh, last few months. And then like, you know, I'm not sure the timing of the sequel, but essentially like, Hey, all right. So among us too, which I guess, depending on how you perceive it, look at it, it may have, it may have possibly been all right because everybody, like, Oh man. Yeah. I loved among us one among us two is coming out already. Yeah. Let me get on that. So it could have maybe went that way, but I think, at some point you would have possibly alienated some people that may have been so used to among us one as well. So it's, it's kind of like a two way street. It feels like, um, that I don't know. Then the challenge they're talking about with the coding of it being so ancient, but, uh, I think it's definitely the smartest move they, they could make considering just trying to ride the train of among us and just sticking with that rather than trying to have everybody who just, more or less game having gradual success more and more, uh, then everybody just jumped to among us too. And then some people may not want to jump to among us too, or may, you know, it pretty much really that essentially. So 
think it's definitely a smart move overall. Um, makes total sense. Like, you know, with all the big games now doing that, like Fall Guys and like, you know, Fortnite and stuff like that. So good on Intersloth. That's a pretty good call, I'd say. Uh, just to keep your player base and not potentially segment it, even though the game is only $5. It's pretty damn cheap on Steam. Um, I think, I'm not sure how it works for the Apple or iOS versions. Um, I think it's on Android and iOS, but I didn't get it for those uh, yet. <laughs> I, I said that like, yeah, I am going to get it. I don't know. So, um, yeah, play that game if you haven't. If you have a good network of friends, it's fun as hell, man. Fun as hell. Uh, it's still even pretty good. I, I've yet to play it solo, like with random people, but man, I'm planning to try that at some point as well. So, yeah. Uh, I think that does it for all of the news for this week. Pretty damn brutal for week, man. A lot of crazy, unexpected stuff. I forgot about Tokyo game show. Uh, just to touch on it real quick near, um, Gestalt, which is basically the remake of the first near, um, which I have some questions about, but, um, that looked pretty good. That was at least the only notable thing. I think Xbox had their brief, uh, brief to Japan specifically. It was more so the same stuff. I think we got a little bit more of a look at Bell and Wonderland, but outside of that, it was more or less the same than, uh, the one we got. So, um, yeah, put all that out of the way. Let's cover what I've been playing. So man, I have to say I put in some work this past weekend. At least it felt like it just by all the games. I felt like I've been complete. I was completely left to right, but, um, finally completed Tony Hawk's pro skater one to two. I, uh, got all the, uh, completed all the challenges for all the stages. Um, I messed with, I did pretty much get, uh, did a, like a single run, like a free or no, I think it's called single run where it's basically Tony Hawk one, Tony Hawk two in terms of the levels. And then there's a, uh, free skate and run trial run or whatever, where basically you can either free skate, do a trial run, which is basically the same as going through the games with the time limit, but you don't have to do the objectives. Um, and then I think there was a speed run mode, which I think is just essentially doing all those objectives within that two minute time limit, which if that's the case, I, I, it's so hard to fathom because like for me personally, man, I just, that's, that feels tough as hell to do. Uh, but apparently I think you could do it. I think, uh, from some of the, uh, games done quick streams, I think I saw some Tony Hawks and them actually legitimately going stage to stage doing all of the uh, objectives. So I could be just totally wrong. And I just don't have that mental capacity to fathom that that is just possible. So all in all, thoroughly enjoyed the game, played some uh, multiplayer a little bit after that a little slightly janky, but I could see within time, some updates might make that more playable, but the format is pretty cool. I do like the free, uh, kind of, um, what is it called? The, um, the kind of random playlist of it, where basically you just keep going game to game, to game, like trick, trick attack, score challenge, graffiti attack. And, you know, pretty much after you complete the game, you get like a couple minutes to like skate around and then you jump into the next game. And then like, after that kind of reminds me of like, gears of war where from the classic games where you had, uh, uh, like if you just joined a lobby, you just do a playlist, you just rotate the maps and you go from map to map. And then like in this is kind of like that where you do like maybe five games and then you switch to a different map, which I think works pretty well. I think if this, the net code was a little bit better, I just feel like things were slightly laggy at times, but I mean, I had a good time, won a couple matches. So, I mean, I was like, I won against some, some pros. No, I didn't No, Cause there was ranked, there's unranked and ranked. 
I uh, messed around with rank, didn't do too well, but for unranked, I uh, I uh, I got a couple wins, got a couple wins under my belt, you know. So, um, yeah, so highly recommend it if you're a fan of even uh, Thug, which is the one I I uh, the one really the only Tony Hawk I really played. Um, definitely recommend it. Uh, interesting format, and you still have the free skate option if you're just like which is one thing I did like about Tony Hawk. I mean, uh, Tony Hawk's underground is that you could just, uh, free skate, not, you know, being restricted by a timeline or anything like that and just skate around and just do tricks and just experiment and stuff, which you can do in this one as well. So definitely recommend it. Uh, pretty awesome game. Tony Hawk is back, baby. It's back. I play a little bit of among us. Um, man, <laughs> that game is fun, man. Just the more you're playing. And then I think it is also very beneficial to play with different groups since, uh, you can kind of somewhat hone your craft against people in terms of, I guess, essentially lying and being the perfect killer and, you know, killing people next to another person and just framing them and saying they were by the dead body and stuff like that. It's a lot of interesting dynamics. This game definitely incites for sure. So been thoroughly enjoying that. Uh, man, Black Ops Cold War Alpha. Uh, so played that this past weekend. So after that PS4 uh, announcement, uh, they announced during that that uh, the PS4 Alpha for Cold War. Uh, you could play that weekend, which I did. Honestly, was not that impressed. Um, I understand it's a beta, so a lot of this stuff will be ironed out, but I don't know. I guess I'm just so used to and love Call of Duty Modern Warfare, I think, is that I feel like any game that's not that is inferior. So I don't know. Maybe I'm having that complex right now. And then like Call of Duty's about to have its last season coming up. <sighs> just depressing, man. Just depressing. It's going to be very bittersweet. Because I literally, I'd have to say, even now so far, definitely my favorite Call of Duty of all time. So we'll see. But I don't know. It's just the feel, the vibe. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Just just like feel the feel of taking a step back. Because I just really love the modern setting rather than any other one. Like I'm not a big fan of World War II. Not a big fan of, um, well, I'll take that back. I, I did enjoy the Black Ops series as a whole. I did like it when they did get more futuristic as well also. So we'll see. I'll uh, definitely try out the beta, but I, I know I'm a sucker anyway for Call of Duty. I mean, regardless how, I'm a, how I feel, I'm probably at least, at the least, going to play it. Probably at least prestige once or depending on how they are going to do their um, prestige uh, ranking up system next year or this year, technically. Um, the rumors are that they, it might not be like uh, Modern Warfare where it's like a seasonal cadence, but it, they said they're somehow going to bring, potentially bring uh, prestige back. So who knows? I think that will change a lot because honestly, <clears throat> I did like, I did enjoy the prestige, not prestige, but the seasonal, um, angle of call of duty, uh, this, this, this year where it, it kept me engaged and, uh, you know, had a decent amount of new stuff that kept me going. The challenges were pretty decent. Um, some were just a pain in the ass, but overall they were pretty decent. So I don't know. Not sure how I feel about this one. We'll see. Uh, then also <clears throat> switch gears to the switch gave my switch some love. It was a big sell on a lot of the games. So I just, uh, splurge slightly. <laughs> I mean, that's not even saying much, but, uh, played, got around to playing fight and rage, which is basically a beat em up. I think it came out a while ago. But I think it recently, semi recently came out on switch and I had never played it. I think I saw uh, my friends play it at one time. Like, you know, what? let me try this game out and actually, uh, yeah, just played through the whole, uh, arcade. 
um, myself and I thoroughly enjoyed it and, uh, you know, played it. It felt kind of slightly basic. But then after the fact, after I beat it, it, uh, it has a lot of great qualities to it. It has like a store where you can, you know, buy stuff with the currency, um, uh, after you beat the game. Um, and I, uh, you know, unlocked, they had a train MO, which I think is, that should be a standard now for beat em ups, uh, which tells that you have a pretty in depth combo system. So they had a training mode and I realized that the freaking, the, the freaking combat was way more in depth than I gave it credit for. Cause there's a lot of stuff you could do that. I didn't even think you could do. I just assumed the the game, the fighting mechanics were basic, but they were deep as hell. So, you know, that might warrant another playthrough, uh, probably maybe this weekend. We'll see. Um, but yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it felt like it, you felt a lot of love to streets of rage, pretty much a lot of beat em up references. I felt I saw in there, saw a bit of final fight, bit of a uh, streets of rage. Um, yeah, it was a lot of ins- inspirations for sure. So then, yeah, and then on top of that, I think there's like 20 endings or something like that, which is crazy. Awesome. Then got around to playing Avengers. Finally did. So after I beat Tony Hawk, I was like, let me get on this Avengers ran into a weird issue. I think it was just the way I installed the game from the disc where I think after I moved it from the hard drive to my main hard drive, which I felt like the game would perform faster that way. Since my hard drive is faster, internal hard drive is faster. It's a hybrid SSD, uh, HDD hard drive. Um, and, uh, after that, it was weird, but either way, I fi- figured it out, played some Avengers and man, I have to say pretty impressed by the game, especially considering, uh, playing the beta. I was not impressed at all. I was actually turned off, actually got me to cancel my pre-order for the game. And then after, you know, hearing reviews and stuff about it, I was like, you know what? All right, let me, let me reinstate it. It seems like they did a lot of great improvements since the, uh, since the beta. And it, it definitely does show it, uh, just the game feels more visceral, more, uh, engaging the sound effects specifically, which they were severely lacking, which I mean, I feel definitely is very important for a beat em up or, you know, I guess generally a beat em up or essentially, um, so yeah, man. Uh, all the characters were pretty cool. Uh, I, I could literally, I think play with pretty much all the characters. Uh, weirdly enough, I think he's not the most popular character, but Iron Man, I liked a lot. Maybe I'm just so fond of the movies. I'm just maybe projected in that sense. I don't know, but it, it, he was just, he was fun to play. You could fly. He has his, uh, freaking posters sound the exact same as the movies. Like, love it. You get all these types of weapons. His combos seem pretty cool. Loved it. So yeah, and no, I'd, I'd be spoiling if I talked about anything else, but overall thoroughly enjoyed the game. Haven't really touched the multiplayer. I don't necessarily plan on it because I'm waiting for the freaking, um, I'm waiting for something. Oh yeah. Whenever they like release, you know, exclusive Spider-Man and all these other people and stuff like that. Um, then I might, and then, uh, I hear the matchmaking is pretty bad on top of that. So I tried it a few times as I was playing the single player, which some missions you can include other people or matchmake with other people, but it seemed to be so broken where it take, took forever, which I assume maybe is partly due to maybe the character preference. Like maybe there's a huge skew of people that only pick one particular character over the whole cast or something like that, or maybe they just weren't playing this mission. I guess it's just a lot of variables that kind of go against traditional matchmaking. If you're playing a single player campaign, it felt at least, but overall just the cinematic experience, the characters, the, the banter, uh, it felt like a straight up Marvel movie in video game form, which personally as a fan of the Marvel movies, that's all I could ask for. So very satisfied with it. Uh, definitely looking forward to the potential, I guess, model of this, 
know it's confirmed to be next gen and we're getting some of these DLC like Nighthawk. I forgot the girl version of Nighthawk. I'll just call her that for, for now. Girl High Night Nighthawk and Spider Man. I think there's rumors that um Black Panther will be in it, but I think obviously due to the, the recent events of Chad with Bozeman, R. I. P. Chad with Bozeman. Um I, I under they understandably avoided that uh during their I think I think they call it the Avengers Round Table. So Yeah. And then last but certainly not least, I beat that. I actually got around to a uh, near automata. So uh I previously before I beat playthrough A and then a lot of other games came out and then I just dropped it. Um, so I came back, I went through play through B, which actually admittedly was pretty different. Cause that was always been my, that was always my main issue with near is that for the first game, it just felt like you literally were going through the game. Like word for word, <laughs> I guess like, um, literally, just going through the game over again with some slight modifications here and there, some slight backstory, which each playthrough, but not necessarily enough to warrant a whole nother playthrough. Cause I know I played like scenario. Uh, I literally like put 40 hours in that game, playing through all the scenarios, which felt like a slog at a lot of the times. And then I think they wanted you to play it a fifth time. Technically I'm like, no, I'm good. So I like, I did some save trickery where, you know, um, I don't really want to spoil that. I don't want to spoil that, but essentially something happens in the story where, uh, your save data potentially is at risk. I think that's kind of safe to say. So with that, I was like, ugh. Just, yeah, just with all these and considering depending on the ending, I guess. So with all that in there, I'm like, you know what? Let me just get, get most of the endings. The other one was kind of optional. So I was like, ah, I'm fine. So yeah. So now with that in mind, going in near automata, it feels like the playthroughs are way more varied and different now that Basically there's different characters with each scenario. It feels like, um, with some slight variations, at least what I'm playing so far. Um, and it just feels more worthwhile to do each playthrough now, rather than the first near where it was like more of a slog, a pain, not much incentive necessarily to go through the multiple endings. Um, without having to suffer through some of it, if that makes sense. So it does make me curious, uh, as to how near replicant is going to be. Cause I'm, I'm more than likely going to pick it up just out of curiosity, see what improvements they made. And if they're actually going to stick with young, I forgot the code names, but I feel like I talked about this way back when I was playing through it, but the, the U S version has an older version of gestalt. I think that's his name. We'll just say Gestalt. I think you could technically name him anything. So yeah, I guess he's kind of nameless. I forgot, but essentially you have the older version of the main character and then the Japanese version had the younger version of the character. And at least from what they showed at Tokyo game show earlier today, that it was the younger version, but we, I'm not sure if it, for the U S we still get the older version that maybe they might just stick with one uniform character and we'll just get the younger version or something like that. I don't know. That'd be kind of a weird retcon. Cause I, I feel I have the sense that maybe that character might be involved in this near to some extent, just a hunch, but, um, yeah. So overall thoroughly enjoying it. Definitely encouraged to play it now. Probably going to see it through. I think there's five endings technically, which, I guess not including some of the not canonical, like one off you died endings, I think, but I'm digging it. I'm thoroughly digging it. I, I was, 
that's actually why I like more or less just pushed it off because I thought it was just going to be like near again where you have to play the game literally the exact same way um, with n- very minor var- uh, variation. But so far, it feels like this is definitely far from that. So we'll see. Slam Dunk, still watching that. I think I'm on episode 14. I think they're still battling each other with this one game, <laughs> this scrimmage, I believe. So there is that. And uh, that's pretty much it for episode 74 Switch of Sites podcast. Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, Feel free to like, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff on your various podcasts and platforms. Um, oh yeah, this was after last episode, but we are now on Amazon music as well. So, I mean, just another ring and domination of podcasts, I guess. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure how this works. I'm just doing this for the fun of it, you know? So, um, yeah. So on Apple uh, man, I'm trying to think of all the podcasts, uh, platforms I'm on iTunes podcast, Apple podcasts, Amazon music. I think pod bean or pod something. Either way, essentially, if you look for me, you should find me. Hopefully, ideally, um, you can also catch this, uh, podcast live on Twitch TV slash a switch where I do record it live every Thursday, ideally, <laughs> uh, at 5 PM. Um, you can also catch the, uh, archive of this podcast on youtube.com slash a switch. If catch me live is not your thing. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, I would say I'd be ready to stream, but <laughs> the unit I use to record now is malfunctions. So and I'm going to return it. So that's probably gonna, <laughs> I was like, I was just about to, but now well, I can't. So, um, yeah, I could probably still work around it though. So who knows? I might, I think I'll be restricted to PC, but I think, um, I may get back in the game sooner than later. Um, yeah. Outside of that, uh, if you have any questions you'd like to submit to the show, uh, feel free to Submit any questions to a switch TV at gmail.com or if I have enough, I'll answer those. Um, but yeah, you can also follow me on Twitch, not Twitch. I mean, that's good too, though. On, uh, Twitter at a switch where pretty much <laughs> a lot of the stuff I do talk about today, at least you get a tidbit in uh little sparkles and other various random stuff generally related to video games. You might see a booty. I like, I'm sorry in advance. Okay. Maybe I just want to like it. Okay. Cause I appreciate the timeline being blessed. All right. I'm sorry. Just have to put that out there. I, if I could, I would stop Twitter from exposing me like that. Okay. But you know, that's not my place apparently, even though I think it should be. I digress. Um, yeah, guys, I think that covers it. Episode 74 switches sites. Um, yeah. Until next time, uh, don't cough. Don't touch people that don't want to be touched. Um, get your damn game on. Oh yeah.